Well, greetings to you from the House of Lords in the Palace of Westminster in London. I'm John, Lord Taylor of Warwick, and I've been a member of the House of Lords now for 25 years. Uh, a Lord is the equivalent of a US Senator. A womb is not a tomb. In 1996, I had the privilege of bringing through an Act of Parliament which created Britain's first DNA database. From the moment of conception, life begins. There are 7.5 billion people on the earth, and yet God has created life in such a way that each person has unique DNA. How beautiful is that? On the contrary, abortion certainly is not beautiful. The, dish, the dictionary definition of abortion is destruction, death, repulsion, rejection, feticide. In the UK, abortion has been legal since 1967. Last year, there were over 200,000 abortions. That's the biggest increase since abortion was made legal. And worldwide now, there are 50, over 50 million abortions per year. In the UK, abortion is possible for a cleft palate, cleft lip, club foot, Down syndrome. The government are now even talking about so-called abortion at home, and they're inviting consultation on that. That would mean that a, a woman could take pills to abort a fetus at home. And I'm one of uh, a number of parliamentarians writing to the government to say that this is wrong absolutely wrong. Now there are those that say look you know there's information and arguments on both sides but I'm not relying upon information I'm relying upon God's word and when you look at God's word in Psalm 139 verses 13 and 16 we see what God thinks about life and protecting life. Verse 13 for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days, all the days ordained for me. And that's crucial, because when life begins, God ordains a future. My mother came from rural Jamaica in the Caribbean. She came to Britain in the early 1950s, thinking that Britain was paved with gold. Well, it was paved with snow and it was very cold and she was looking for an apartment to live and all she could see were signs in the windows, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. And she was in a very, well, just a very weak position. And she became pregnant and she was told she had a choice, adoption or abortion. Now, Adopting a black child in the 1950s, which was quite a racist nation at that time, really was going to be very, very difficult. And so she was told, really, ab abortion, I think, is the way you should go. And she said, no, no, no. And when she was looking for an apartment to live, she tells me, and I was three months old at the time, she lifted me up and said, God, I have two things in this world. One, you, my faith in you, God, and two, baby John. And so I commit baby John into your hands. And 44 years later, having been ennobled by the Queen, I'm walking into the House of Lords. I bow to the Queen's golden throne. I look up at the public gallery. My mother nods to me and I nod to her. So her prayers had very much been answered. And God had a plan for me. Abortion would have stopped God's plan. Now, we know that there's a legal battle and it's going through the courts. We understand all that. But there's a distinction between man's law and God's law. Man's law is temporary. God's law is eternal. And that's very clear in Psalm 35, verse 24. God's law is above man's law. Now, you may be thinking, well, you know... It's all very confusing. What can we really do? Well, we can pray because what we decree in the spiritual will affect the natural. In fact, what we decree in the spiritual is actually more powerful than the natural. And that's why prayer is so important. Now, 
I have to repent on behalf of the UK because as a nation, we have turned our back on God. Every day in Parliament, we pray. We start proceedings with prayer in accordance with the Holy Bible. And then we forget him. We forget God. We forget the Bible. And we talk from head knowledge. That's really been how it's been, I'm afraid, increasingly in both Houses of Parliament. And we have to repent for that. And I repent on behalf of the United Kingdom. And to say to God, we were done wrong. You created life. And we are increasingly destroying life. And that's against your will. So we repent. We ask for forgiveness. But, you know, God knows the past, he knows the present, he knows the future. And he's a, a gracious God. He's a loving God. And because his word is not just information, it's revelation. That will bring the transformation for individuals, men and women, for families, for towns, cities and the nation. And I truly believe that eventually we will go back to God, not because of clever lawyers, but because God's will will be done. I have no doubt about that. And so I would ask you to continue to pray, to pray, to realise that we are, we are winners. We're victors, not victims. And, you know, the irony of this situation is that all those who are for abortion have already been born. <laughs> and yet they're trying to take away the privilege of others to be born. And whilst it's right that a fetus doesn't have a voice, a fetus, an unborn baby, has rights. And we have the privilege of being their voice by praying, by uh, accepting that we've done wrong as a nation, asking for forgiveness. That's why that uh, National Day of Repentance is so important. But knowing that God is a loving God, he's a God of restoration. He wants to bring individuals back to him. He wants to bring the nation back to him. And there are enough people, I believe, in the Houses of Parliament who believe this. We are perhaps outnumbered by the others, but it's not about numbers. <laughs> you could just have one person on your side. And we do. It's God. That's all you need for us to win. And so I would say to you, please, pray, 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 because the victory is ours. The victory was won 2021 years ago. A womb is not a tomb.